And I think my mom saw the writing on the wall and she said, look, I don't think you're gonna do anything else in your life but this. One of my, my most early memories of, um, of a particular movie that, uh, that captivated me was the, uh, the Lon Chaney Hunchback, a silent film, uh, something that, that a you know, six or seven year old uh, would not necessarily uh, sit down and enjoy. Uh, my stepdad was a, was a huge film connoisseur. He loved film. He had a, a large laser disc collection. And on this particular evening, it was, it was The Hunchback. And it was late at night. Uh, it wasn't a family uh, movie. It was something he was watching for himself before uh, he went to bed and everyone else was kind of going to sleep. I was absolutely floored. I mean, I thought this was a real person that was deformed. I mean, I didn't know what was going on. It blew my mind. Uh, and he started to kind of explain to me that this is Lon Chaney, he's the man of a thousand faces, and, and that he's, he does this to himself. He does his own prosthetic makeup to himself. I can be a special effects person. I would make the things that... And at that time, I was dabbling with this. I loved the idea of creating characters and creating these disguises and these faces. And so Halloween time was kind of supply central for me. So I would go around and pick out little bottles of latex and fake blood and I love to take latex masks, cut them up into what I felt like were prosthetic pieces and glue those onto my face. I was an only child so I was my own guinea pig a lot of the time. If I needed to go to motion picture effects or Berman Industries, my mom was always eager and willing to drive me there, talk with them, um, you know, show them my portfolio and kind of go, I don't know what he's doing. Uh, can you guys help kind of guide him into this world? These were very professional places that we were going into that had um, chemicals and supplies and things that were uh, quite intimidating for a seven-year-old to, uh, to be dabbling with. But I dropped out of high school um, in 10th grade and that was, a, that was a big decision, it was a big move because at that moment um, I had started getting little jobs and I think my mom saw the writing on the wall and she said, look, this is your time to, uh, to jump in headfirst into the deep end and see what happens. Um, I don't think you're going to do anything else in your life but this. I can't thank her enough for that because I, I definitely wouldn't be where I'm at now if she wouldn't have allowed that to happen. I very early on though found my way to the Berman studio and meeting Tom Berman and Barry Berman uh, was life-changing. They, they had a small studio with a, with a small intimate crew and they were very particular about the jobs they took on. A lot of their focus at that time when I was brought on was hyper-realism. They were doing shows like Nip Tuck and Grey's Anatomy, Private Practice. This was all medical simulation work, essentially. It was knowing anatomy, knowing how to duplicate an actor from start to finish, um, doing really subtle, realistic prosthetics to change somebody. To me, that was where the magic lies, is that you're fooling people in such a remarkable way that uh, it goes unnoticed. To this day, that's still truly my favorite thing. The Burmans cultivated this, and, and at that time, we're doing some really revolutionary work in, in terms of photorealism. I, I couldn't really think of a better way to be thrown to the wolves than, than that job in that particular setting. I always thought it would be great to have my own studio. I always really wanted to orchestrate teams, design and create uh, prosthetics and characters and bodies and all of these great things for film and television. And I felt like it was really important to have um, the, the right experience prior to doing that. So I wanted to learn as much as I possibly could and be that sponge and absorb as much as, as I could from people like Tom Berman and Barry Berman and, 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 and get that, that foundation. The studio is really more known for uh, kind of realism, uh, character makeups, old age makeups, body duplication, things like this, which is great because that's my passion. It's really what I love the most. Star Trek Picard being uh, not that, being uh, you know sci-fi aliens, otherworldly uh, creatures and characters, was an odd call for us to get. I think I even said to them, I, I don't really know why I, I'm even being called for this. I think I'm kind of an odd choice. And uh, I thought that was brutally honest to them, but I think they actually kind of appreciated uh, the fact that I was a little confused. They said, look, this is a show that is based in the reality of story. Uh, we're doing something that needs to feel like next gen, uh, and next gen being kind of more of a cerebral, serious show, uh, a drama really, that, that had um, a lot of story points that were rooted in, uh, in, in real life and, uh, and lessons uh, of, of human nature. So as they're describing this to me, I realize that my job is no different here. My job is to try and create something that 
feels like it fits within this world as realistically as possible, even though they are aliens. So something that felt like maybe I was not the right choice for very quickly became uh, something that I felt like I was a great choice for. And I really embraced it and felt like we were actually bringing something to the table. One of the very first things I did once we were awarded this job was get a, an additional satellite studio. It was about 5,000 square feet. And this really allowed us to be ready for the, the numbers of, of Romulan and Vulcan um, and, and ex-Borg that was then thrown at us. So it was a great learning experience for us uh, in terms of the way that that could run and the volume of, of prosthetics and, and, uh, and people working in, under two different roofs. Winning an Emmy for Picard was, um, uh, it was amazing. Unfortunately, it was during COVID, so uh, they they didn't have a show uh, that year. So uh, me and my wife were uh, at dinner, and I had my phone propped up on the table watching a live stream while we ate and had drinks. That's how I, I discovered that we that we won for uh, for Picard. And honestly, I, I couldn't imagine it any other way. It was actually a really really fun, beautiful way to uh, to win my first Emmy. A prop that was. Uh, really meaningful to story that, that had a lot of pressure would be uh, Denzel's head from Macbeth. The story is obviously a, um, a historic, amazing story that everyone knows. Uh, we all know what the demise of this character is. And to do a severed head of somebody like Denzel Washington, it was just the, the they just kept stacking up higher and higher of like pressure, 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 pressure. Daniel Tiranazzi is my, my lead sculptor at the studio. I painted that head. It was an important paint job. I really wanted to, to, to deck it out. My wife, Sasha uh, Camacho Van Dyke, did all of the, the hair work on it. It was all a single hair punch. Uh, his beard, his brows, his lashes. This head was kind of a great collaboration of, of everybody in the studio really trying to do their absolute best I think that the surprising uh, factors of, of having your own studio would be the business side of it that, that a lot don't really think about. So I love what I do. I love sculpting. I love painting. Uh, I love the technical side of things. I love being able to figure out the engineering behind a, a mold, for example, and going through the, the different difficulties that could come up with it, thinking ahead, really being involved in that process. And unfortunately, the more uh, work you have, the busier that you are, the larger your company becomes the less that, that Vincent is able to do that. Uh, the more I'm kind of stuck in my office, I think that if I stop having my hands um, kind of in these different departments, uh, you kind of start to lose your, your touch. And I always want to make sure that I'm pushing myself to, uh, to be better. 